Hi, everyone. Okay, my plug, The Crown and the Cage God. That's my plug. Uh, so moving on, my journal, uh, number 79. I'm going to read it in just a minute, but just give me a second to set this up uh, because I'm picking up some former themes, stuff I've talked about in, in past journals. I'm going to like take those threads and sort of weave them like into a new blouse. Um, so like journal 40 uh, was sort of about AI and the arts and that humanity is a requisite quality of anything to be uh, art. Bought art is not art at all. Um, I picked up that theme again in journal 76, I think it was. Um, and in journal 53, and in the, in the middle of those two, I was talking about technological advancements um, from the perspective of Video Guild, the radio star. So I'm going to pick up there with some of those themes. And again, again I'm going to move in a little bit of a new direction with it. But I'm also going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about um, Richard Dawkins, The Extended Phenotype. Beautiful book, but I'm going to take some liberties with it. So Dawkins wouldn't you know, see this and be like, oh, that, yeah, you're right. That's what I said. You know, especially about like human beings. Um, there's a little bit too much complexity here to make the crude claims that I do. And I acknowledge that up front. Um, but even like with birds, like not all birds make nests. Like, have you ever seen a penguin nest? Um, I certainly haven't. Um, sand plovers, they just dig holes in the ground uh, for their... And so when I say like birds make nests, I, I'm not making a comprehensive ornithological statement. You know, it's not about biological fact that withstands all scrutiny. I'm just, there's a narrative. It's about the storytelling here. And in that storytelling, uh, it is really, the journal has some moments of, of being really biological, um, a little bit bogged down in some, in some like vernacular the sort of geneticist's parlance. And so, I mean, a lot of people I've already lost. You know, there's like, a, it just sounds like gibberish to me. And then the people who can follow it and maybe have a background and some sort of background in this are going to be like, oh, you took liberties with that thing. And so I don't like this. Uh, so nobody's going to like this journal, but I do. Um, the nobody right here really likes it. So I'm going to read mine this now. Journal 79, I have food like all of my teeth, so. Okay. Journal 79, Saturday, June 22nd, 2024, 100% human. Part one, art and technology. Hi, everyone. And hi, bees who make hives full of hexagons and sometimes find yourself snagged in a spider web. Hi, spiders who make webs and gradually eat those webs to recover some of the energy spent in making them. And sometimes you get eaten by birds before snagging your first bee. Hi, birds who make nests from sticks and litter. And sometimes, instead of bugs, you dine on fish. And hi, beavers, who make dams from much larger sticks, which benefit the local fish, apparently. None of you make your hives, webs, nests, or dams by choice. You're just puppets of your DNA, innumerable A's, C's, G's, and T's, wedded in nucleotide matrimony. No courtship before betrothal, though. These are arranged marriages. The A's must bunk with T's, and the C's are stuck with G's. There's no mingling of Capulets and Montagues in the chromosomal barn dance. What's more interesting than the arranged pairings is the divorce ceremony, which happens in bulk. An entire line of connubial nucleotides gets separated in one fell disunion, and that creates meat. The euphemisms used by geneticists are transcription, meat planning, and translation, meat making. But DNA does more than construct our physical form. It programs how our meat will modify the world in which it resides. That's the extended phenotype, and humans have one too. But we don't make silky bug nets or waxy hexagons or slapdash shacks from old tree scraps. Our biological compulsion to create isn't so crude. 
What we make is art and technology, and we have no idea why we're doing it. Art serves no practical purpose. We can't even eat it to restore the energy we lost in its production, but at least it's innocuous. The technology will ultimately kill us, and yet we carry on, just like the bees, hexagon after hexagon, as the meaty marionettes of our DNA. And why should we reflect on our tendencies? Bees don't get philosophical about their honey. Hey guys, call me a conspiracy theorist, but I'm pretty sure we've been enslaved by an industrial pollinization conglomerate that's stealing all our product. I kind of think we should go on strike. That doesn't happen. They just do what their genes have programmed them to, extending their phenotypes all over fields of almond, plum, and cherry trees. What would happen, I wonder, if we discovered bee honey was the sole source of all human death? Name a disease, any disease, honey did it. If it weren't for bees, we would live forever. What would our response be? I suspect St. Ambrose, the patron saint of beekeepers, would be posthumously excommunicated. That would happen on day one. And by the next morning, we'd have a plan to eradicate all bees, every last one of them, by a ruthless and ingenious means, because our survival depends on it. But we're not doing that to our own apocalyptic honey technology. Because of our programming, nothing can stop us from spinning that silk. The first thing it wrapped and paralyzed was the arts. The second thing will be us. And once we're gone, the story of our departure will be disseminated to the universe by chat GPT. Between now and that demise, I hope we can all prioritize the arts, which are not art at all unless they are 100% human. Okay, that's it, that's number 79. Before I get to my like hope, my departing hope for you, let's do my hopes for the world, for our world, uh, which is that I hope AI companies, the ones that exist now, the ones that are coming, I hope they retain uh, everything they generate with timestamps um, for validation of what is human and what is computer you know, generated, computer made, um, to be able to distinguish, right, to authenticate uh, what is uh, human. And that's not too much to ask. Like, oh, that's a big commitment. That's a lot of, you know, data. That's not even the tiny. Like, think about, like, we villainize uh, big pharma, right, these pharmaceutical companies. And so if they flood the market with, some drug with a bunch of X's and J's in the names, you know, and 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 they're generating like billions and billions of dollars. They gather so much data before the drug ever enters the market. I'll talk about this in the future. I don't want to get too bogged down in it right now, but but before the drug enters uh, the market, afterward, oh, data collection, collection, amassing, amassing, analysis, analysis. So. If these AI companies, these giant AI companies are making even more money polluting the arts with counterfeit after counterfeit after counterfeit, they have enough hard drive space. They do. They have enough hard drive space to go about their business with a minimum threshold of responsibility. Um, and it's like, it is there. I mean, it is incumbent on them to do it. The onus 100% has to 100% be on uh, the AI. Like, because what's the alternative? What we're doing now, which is self-report. Did you use AI in making this? you know, work of art or, or self-report is what we're doing now. And that will never work. That's a joke because the amount of like sleazy non-artists, I mean, like how many scam likely calls do you get every week? And, and just like email solicitations from, you know, bots and, and like uh, sleazy non-artists outnumber the, the real artists. I don't know, 10,000 to one. So like, when was the last time one of them turned themselves in? You know, like never, I'll never do that. And so self-report, like at least in the, in like with like a fake Rolex, 
Um, that takes skill to make some amount of skill. I don't know how much, but, but there's some amount of skill in making those things. And it takes materials to, to actually manufacture. It takes time to do it. AI eliminates all of those barriers, all of those limitations. So the world will just be overrun with shit. So, like, okay, so let's say on that subject, you take your dog for a walk. You, maybe you don't have a dog. You take a dog, like your neighbor's dog, or you find a stray, if those exist, um, and like put a, a leash on it and walk it around the block. When it shits on the sidewalk, that's your job to clean it up. You have, that's you, that's on you to clean it up. That's your responsibility. You are an asshole. Like literally, okay, you're an asshole if you expel the feces, right? But if you don't pick it up, and you're holding the leash. Oh, figuratively, you're an asshole. It's like, imagine the world a year from now as just encased, uh, completely enclosed in a layer of like fresh, wet feces. No one would go for a walk and no one would step outside. No one would be in a community. No one would engage. And that's what's coming. If AI can't pick up after themselves, if they can't clean up their shit, that's what's, that's the world that's coming. So my hope for the world is that AI, these companies will have the accountability, right? That, that they will be able to um, manage their own mess, to pick up after themselves. They'll be held minimally accountable for this. And my hope for you is that your sidewalks are clean and clear, you know? That the people on it are empathetic just like you because everyone who isn't empathetic has already left when I was insulting them. They've already clicked dislike and left and, and exited the video when I was insulting those like sleazebag, you know, not artists. And so you're all empathetic and a ton of you are artists and I hope your sidewalks are populated with people like you. Right? Bye.